Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 is a modern-day Titanic mystery, with no trail to follow and just miles and miles of searching. How do you find a needle in an endless haystack? Picking things up where we left off in the first episode, the second episode of the MH370 Netflix documentary series dives into events that followed the mysterious disappearance. How do 239 people just disappear into thin air? With families ripped apart and left with no answers, we continue the chilling tale of Malaysian Airlines Flight MH370. The second tragedy, Malaysian Airlines loses another aircraft. In fact, it's the same model airplane, a Boeing 777. This time, there's no big mystery. Malaysian Airlines Flight MH17, scheduled from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur, containing 283 passengers and 15 cabin crew, before it was mercilessly shot down by Russian-controlled forces. Nearly four months after the disappearance of Flight MH370, a surface-to-air missile brought down the Malaysian aircraft. The same model, a Boeing 777-200. A Russian Army Control Unit shot down Malaysia Airlines Flight 17, MH17, the commercial flight carrying innocent civilians. Malaysian Airlines had a trouble-free history until 2014, with no major accidents or crashes in over two decades. And now, in four short months, a second flight ended with fatalities. Was this just a tragedy of mere coincidence, or did the two have a much more sinister link to each other? The search continues. With the new data in the search for Flight MH370, this became a much, much bigger operation, stating that the flight went further south and disappeared somewhere off the southern Indian Ocean. This wasn't an easy search covering the ocean. The grueling southern Indian Ocean was nothing short of an unforgiving ocean, with tremendous waves up to 80 feet high and the ocean floor carved with towering ridges. The deep waters were vast and endless. The search continued, despite all adversities, and yet no sign of the missing jetliner or a single piece of debris had been discovered. A year of mourning goes by. There are no answers or closure for the next of kin. Families of the passengers are featured in the episode as they describe their unresolved grief. As relatives retell the story, the pain lay fresh as the day the flight first went missing. The Waterfall of Conspiracies In the years since the disappearance, every conspiracy theory and every wild, ridiculous, and even improbable idea had been floated around by someone. From political agendas, insurance scams, a meteorite hitting the airplane, or even alien abductions, the conspiracy theories ranged far and wide. With no aircraft to be found, none of this could be proven or disproven. The theories continued. A year after the crash, a French journalist, Florence de Changy, decides to revisit the disappearance, all its circumstances, and theories to gain a fresh perspective. She talks about how in the past year, the captain of the MH370 flight had been painted to be the villain. With his personal life dissected and personal and political affiliations put on blast, she wondered if this was really the answer. Her investigation into the captain's life only disproved that he was in fact the mastermind behind the entire disappearance. Florence lined up interviews with immediate family members, including Captain Shaw's sister and those close to the missing pilot to better understand what could have happened. What did she find? She believes Captain Shaw was most likely not the reason the disappearance happened and answers needed to be searched elsewhere. On the other end of things, the search for the missing jetliner continues and there is further development, with the entire investigation being based on the evidence provided by the Inmarsat Satellite Company's data and Boeing's flight performance data. Reluctantly, there's not a shred of debris. Aviation journalist Jeff Wise starts to question just how accurate this data may have been in the first place. With no formal report released by Inmarsat or the Malaysian authorities, the public and families were still in the dark over a lot of things, including exact details of the satellite information. When Inmarsat releases its comprehensive report regarding the incident, a new twist of events occurs. The report clearly states that the satellite tracking system was first turned off along with the rest of the tracking electronics and then turned back on. This new development put a huge question mark on the reliability of the data provided. Wise explains how this might be possible. He states that airline pilots are in fact not trained on how to switch the electronic tracking system on or off for satellites. There's no switch, knob or dial to do so that exists within the cockpit. Instead, on a Boeing 777, all such electronics are tucked into the electronics bay. 
Hidden underneath a layer of carpet exists a hatch which is accessible in flight that opens in an area between first class and the cockpit. Let's also point out this is where the pilot's emergency oxygen canister is stored as well. Gilan Waterloo. There are many things about this unsolved mystery that simply do not make sense. In a world of sprawling modern technology, how can an aircraft go missing for so long? With thousands of people involved in the search, countless resources and international search parties on the lookout, how can no one have found any answers? Gilan Waterloo thought the same. After losing his wife and youngest two children on the flight and getting no answers from anywhere, he decides to take matters into his own hands. He describes how he was put in contact with an unspecified individual in a position of power, who highlights American involvement in this disappearance. He explains how two American AWACS, which stands for Airborne Warning and Control System, might be involved. Think of it like this. Imagine an aircraft whose primary purpose is built for battle. This is more than a tiny satellite airplane. To be more clear, this is NATO's eyes in the sky. The Netflix episode dives deeper into the conversation. Claiming that there were United States AWACS that were monitoring the South China Sea when MH370 disappeared. Waterloo further states that the aircraft was either jammed by the AWACS or even shot down by a missile. It begs to question, could the United States military be involved in the cover-up? With new and confusing information, Waterloo decides he can't let this slide and decides to unite with families of other victims and take matters into his own hands. He takes all his story to the media and tries to uncover for himself the true narrative of what happened to the flight that took his family away from him. Waterloo managed to gather families affected by the disappearance from different corners of the world and demand a more transparent investigation. He found a lawyer and filed a terrorism charge and took matters to the court in France in hopes to gain some form of justice and accountability on the matter. Russian Involvement With the possibility of the Inmarsat data being fabricated, Questions are being raised on what was the exact flight path taken by the aircraft after its disappearance. Like most of the supervillains in pop culture, it started to seem like Russia may have had something to do with the disappearance of MH370. In light of the Malaysian airline flight MH17 crash, in which Russia was directly involved, could there be communist ties also linked to flight MH370? Jeff Wise mentions how it's possible to physically tamper the Inmarsat data creating an alternate explanation for what could have happened to this doomed flight. His theory, if the aircraft were to have traveled north instead of the expected southern route, an alternate location for it to land could have been in Kazakhstan, a client state of Russia. But what motive did Russia have to cause this incident? The manifest of passengers included three Russian nationals on board the missing flight, and one passenger seated in first class only 15 feet away from the electronics hatch. Could this be the answer? Let's go back to eight days before the disappearance of MH370. Russia had just invaded Crimea, which is a peninsula in Ukraine located above the Black Sea. With the international media all over this incident, the only thing that could have put a pin in this discourse was the disappearance of an entire passenger aircraft. It could be a perfect distraction. With this in mind, Jeff Wise lays out his second theory. This one is wild. His theory goes something like this. A while after the Malaysian Airlines flight had taken to the skies, it enters into a no-man's territory between Malaysian and Vietnamese airspace. One of the three alleged Russian agents on board goes up front and creates a ruckus which distracts the flight attendants. The second agent, who's in the front seats, moves towards the electronics hatch and sneaks his way into the electronics bay. Now hidden from view, he can slowly take complete control over the MH370 aircraft. The agent first disables all communication systems directly from the electronics cabin. The captain and first officer in the cockpit are overcome with concern and start to lose control of the aircraft, not knowing how the communication glitch has occurred. The agent starts to depressurize the cabin, and the oxygen masks drop in the cockpit and the passenger cabins. The flight crew's panic intensifies and things start to slip further, as a sharp turn in the opposite direction is initiated without their control. As the cabin is depressurized, things start to fade out, as all passengers on the aircraft lose consciousness with a limited supply of roughly 15 minutes of oxygen. The agent in the electronics bay has full access to the cockpit's oxygen supply by the turn of a knob, leaving both pilots unconscious and not breathing. Finally, he can now tamper with the Inmarsat data and successfully carry out the hijack. 
The aircraft eventually lands or crashes in the lonely and quiet deserts of Kazakhstan, far from the expected search area. Jeff Wise describes the aftermath of him dropping his explosive theory. Not only did he deal with media outrage, he was also ousted from the independent group, who had staked their reputations trying to focus on the Flying South theory. His credibility was questioned on all fronts, including a response from the Inmarsat company itself, pointing out weaknesses with his proposition. Despite the crazed and somewhat science-fictional second theory by Wise, what goes amiss in the criticism is that, after all, anything could be possible in the case of the flight that was never found. If all other data and theories were correct, the big question still remains. Where was flight MH370? The episode ends on a shocking new discovery. The flapperon of a Boeing 777 is found. Is the aircraft debris from Flight 370 or not? At the end of the second episode of this docuseries, we're left with the same question. Where did the flight disappear to? Is any theory really too far-fetched for an aircraft full of passengers that was never found? Nine years after its disappearance, the world still has more questions than answers regarding Flight MH370. The one thing that's helping families the most is hope. The surviving relatives deserve closure. Share this story and keep the discourse alive as remembrance to those who were never found. Stay tuned for a review of the final episode of Netflix's MH370 series.